and the focus of the final video is preparing your design for fabrication. The first step in this process is to use what is called the Design Rule Check or DRC tool. Altium's DRC tool is a very useful feature to run once you've finished your PCB. It will produce a report that compares your design against the design rules that we set up earlier. If there are any violations, the report will notify us of those violations with the location and the count of every single one. Let's run the design rule check on our example project that we've created in Altium. To run the design rule check, select the tools drop down menu and then the very first option, design rule check. All we have to do is select the button to the bottom left. Run design rule check. Altium will automatically run and produce a report detailing all of the different violations that may have occurred when comparing your design against the design rules. So we can close this message window. And fortunately, it appears that our design has no violations of those design rules, meaning that it appears to be safe for fabrication. However, that's not always the case. You should be aware of some common errors and warnings that could cause problem when manufacturing your design. Here are a list of some common types of errors that are likely to occur when you're designing a PCB in Altium Designer. The first is known as a clearance constraint. Clearance in this context means the outline of space around every single component or track. Ultimately, a clearance constraint is violated when you route tracks or place components too close together. To fix this error, simply add more space between the conflicting tracks and components to increase the clearance. A width constraint error means that the width of your routing track is outside the range of acceptable values. To fix this error, you would have to reduce the width of your routing track. A short circuit constraint is caused when you have intersecting tracks on the same layer of copper. Fortunately, Altium prevents this. However, if it does somehow occur, you would have to fix it by routing one of the violating tracks on the opposite layer of the board. The way we did this when we were routing our PCB was to route one on the top layer and one on the bottom layer, and also make use of wires to switch from top to bottom layer within one signal. An unrouted net constraint simply means that you forgot to route a track for a necessary electrical connection and this will be visible because you'll see an air wire that is still present in your PCB even though you felt you have routed all the tracks. Make sure that you check all of your air wires and also check for missing or sloppy connections on the routing tracks, uh, particularly where the routing track meets the pin to see that you have successfully selected the pin. The final common error type that I'd like to discuss is isolated or dead copper in your polygons. So this is usually caused by placing tracks or components in a way that creates islands in your polygon pores. And when you have an island in the polygon pore, it's actually not connected to anything in what we call dead copper. Therefore, it can't reliably be called ground. And if you do have a component that requires that ground in an isolated or dead copper polygon region, it won't be grounded and your circuit will fail. So let's have a quick look at what I'm talking about here. So here's our complete polygon. Uh, I would just like to modify my tracking and produce an isolated copper island within my larger ground polygon. So what I first will do, uh, if I'm going to modify the circuit in any way, I should shelve our polygons. To do this, press Tools, Polygon Pause, and Shelve. It basically puts them aside and we can put them back whenever we want. Uh, let's just grab our interactive routing tool using place interactive routing. And let's place uh, some copper tracks that would produce a ground island. So I'm gonna do this on the bottom layer. So what I've done here is I've basically enclosed uh, a track in a circle. And when we replace our polygon pores, you'll notice that the copper will now be a little bit different. So I'll go to Tools, Polygon Pores, and Restore Two Shelved Polygons. So reshelving the polygons is not enough. Uh, the green highlighting here is telling me that there is a violation with my polygon layer. Uh, and that is simply due to the fact that I haven't re-poured the polygon. So press Tools, Polygon Pores, and Repore All. 
Okay, so I've created a, a dead piece of copper in our bottom ground plane polygon. So as you can see, this small blue copper track has encircled a piece of copper from my copper polygon. And if I were to check the signal of that small piece of copper in the middle, it actually wouldn't be ground, even though it's part of our ground polygon play. The best way to identify this error, because it can be difficult, is to change one setting on your polygon pores. So double click your polygon pore, and you want to select remove dead copper. So this actually removes those isolated ground islands and shows them to us. I will now need to re the polygon by pressing tools, polygon pores, and re all. Now, as you can see, that small ground uh, island that I created is now removed because Altium senses that it doesn't have the same signal connection as the other parts of our polygon. The detriment here would be if I was placing my joystick somewhere over the top of this item and that pin needed to be grounded, well then, uh, basically that pin would not be grounded because there's no way for our ground pin to reach a polygon. So that's the issue of isolated or ground islands and uh, be aware of that because it's a very common mistake when you're creating these PCBs for the first time. So once your design is finally error free, you run your design rule check and there are no violations at all, that means you're finally ready to export the project to a required format for fabrication. Perhaps the most common format among manufacturers are Gerber files. Gerber files are simply a series of text files that represent the positioning of components in different layers of the PCB. So to export Gerber files in Altium, we go to File, Fabrication Outputs, and Gerber Files. So let's do that in Altium right away. And we need to go to File, Fabrication Outputs, and you wanna look for Gerber Files. So this is the uh, dialog for creating your Gerber Files. So go to the Layers tab at the top, and now you can select which layers you're going to actually include in your Gerber files for the manufacturer to produce. So what I wanna do here is select the plot layers uh, option down the bottom left and select all on. That will create uh, Gerber files from all of our layers. Next, let's go to the drill drawing tab next to layers. And there are two things to check here. You want to make sure that plot all used drill pairs are selected for both uh, options here for drill drawing plots and for drill guide plots. So click both of those options and we'll turn to the general menu uh, and select OK. So you'll notice that Altium also creates a CAM file, which is, stands for a computer aided manufacturing file. It's Altium standard for producing these Gerber files. And so we can just save that if we want to produce Gerber files uh, with the same settings that we just used. And in order to see your Gerber files, browse to your file directory for your project. In this case, mine is in Documents, Altium Projects, Wireless Controller Shield. Your Gerber files will be stored in the project outputs for your project. So the Gerber files are the series of text files that we just generated. And it's basically every document in this folder except for our design rule check outputs. Typically, all you have to do is collect all of those Gerber files into an archive, uh, zip them up, and then you send them to a manufacturer. So let's illustrate that process. So all of these files are known as Gerber files. I will right click and I want to just add them to an archive. I use uh, WinRAR archive. So let's make that a zip and you may call it your wireless controller shield. And there it is, you would send this file to a manufacturer and they're able to take those Gerber files and etch and mill the entire design and you'll have your PCB uh, sent to you. However, it's important to note that manufacturers don't check your design for errors. All they do is take the Gerber files, see if they can be manufactured and then put them through their machines. So the only errors they'll pick up are errors that fail to fabricate basically. If you've made a circuit error, there's no chance. So make sure that you double check your work before sending away to a manufacturer. And another thing to check is the details regarding the manufacturer's design rule capability. So their machines will have some limitations. Go to your manufacturer's website, look for their design rule limitations and see if they satisfy uh, your project. Before we end, I'd like to just show you some 
uh, recommended manufacturers that we use at James Cook University. Uh, the first of which is PCB Zone. So they're based out of New Zealand and they're great for time critical projects that are a little bit expensive. So typically for a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter board, you're looking at $100 per board. On the low cost side of things, we have IT. They produce quality products and they get them to you very quickly, uh, but not as quickly as PCB Zone who offers overnight shipping. IT usually takes a couple of days. Uh, so they're a low cost manufacturer and it's usually $29 for a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter board. Finally, if you want to get a bit professional, we recommend using BEC Manufacturing or Beckman. They're high quality and high quantity manufacturer. Uh, to get an idea of what they cost, um, you'll have to go to their website and get a quote. They fabricate their boards uh, by the panel. So with a bunch of boards that are connected together. So that's it for this video on how to fabricate the design that you've developed. Uh, and this completes the example project that we were working through. Stay tuned to this playlist because we will be adding an additional video which covers how to use sheet symbols in your schematic document if there's a need to duplicate certain componentry and also how to create your own custom integrated library. We'll be covering those in a bit. Thanks.